Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Some of you might know <clears throat> that we as Friday host a series of interviews with important VCs, but also other players from the ecosystem. And obviously, to this ecosystem, we also invite um, important players such as private banks. And today, I'd like to welcome Thomas from Donner and Reuschel, a very highly renowned private bank in Munich and Hamburg. So today, Thomas is going to tell us a little bit about himself, introduce him, and then we'll jump into some very exciting questions about alternative assets. Welcome, Thomas. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, looking forward to the discussion and the questions. Great. Thank you. So, um, Thomas, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself first so that people know who, uh, who is in front of them today, and then we can jump into what Don and Royal exactly does mm -hmm. and how you interact with your customers, mm -hmm. maybe also some entrepreneurs. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I'm working now for the last 30 years in the financial industry, started as a, as a, a commodity and volume trader late in the 80s in Frankfurt, um, staying in that business uh, for the next 20 years as a prop trader on Forex and uh, shares and something like that. And then found out um, that there's much more in the industry than just the liquid markets and, uh, and switched sides uh, to the illiquid markets. And uh, we started obviously with real estate because that's the easiest way to, to tap into that market. And uh, now doing a private equity, venture capital, infrastructure, um, direct investments, um, working together with VC funds, private equity funds, uh, and focusing a little bit uh, exclusively on healthcare, mobility, uh, and the field of sports. Um, so therefore, we do think about ourselves as a niche player um, and try to provide uh, our clients or outside investors with a, with a whole variety of opportunities. Mm, very nice, super interesting. I mean, this is uh, basically also what brought us together um, yeah. with your special focus on, on venture capital and private equity. Uh, do you... Would you like to give us maybe some more background as well on, on Don and Reuschel itself? So where, where does it come from and um, sort of what made you drive towards that approach that you just mentioned? Yeah, it's, it's established in the 80s, 1800s. So it's more than 220 years old. Um, and from the roots on, it was a venture. Yeah? It was founded by a 24-year-old Hamburg guy, uh, go uh, to the court and registered his new venture, a bank that's it's a little bit like the story today. Yeah, you have a have an idea. You basically have a business. The business then was was uh, as a merchant, and he thought that the bank would fit perfectly into that, his ecosystem, his world, and that's maybe a little bit like our days. Yeah, um, obviously, I mean, they lost their focus a little bit, so they were strong in South America and uh, in Latin America, and then over the, the next two hundred years, they lost their focus a little bit. Now it's a private bank focused on, on wealth management, uh, rich private clients, and, and, and also in the capital market and in the asset management field. Um, but um, for a couple of years ago, we thought that it would be a very good opportunity to tap into the alternative market, to, to show something different, yeah? to, to have a little bit of different scoop to the market, and not only thinking about the liquid assets or maybe just real estate, so make a little bit deeper dive into it. Mm -hmm. Super interesting. Okay, thank you. Um, so you've you've already or just mentioned that you are focusing more and more on alternative assets as a bank, mm -hmm. uh, as a niche player. You called it yourself. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about why you believe that uh, alternative assets are so important? How do you differentiate yourselves a bit from from other banks, and and why that is actually a value to your clients? Yeah. I think the most interesting thing is it's we can give people access to the market. I mean, we only see maybe 3% of the market or 5% because it's, it's super big and it's super foggy. Nobody really knows what's going on and uh, who's out there and he, who's fundraising and who not and what is hot and what not. Um, but to provide people with access to that market um, and also try to be more like a platform and not only seen as a bank. Um, that's maybe a, a big difference, a big difference to, to other competitors out there. It's not just that we see it as a product that we 
try to sell. It's also that we, that we look into markets and uh, look what can we really do? Where can we be of, uh, of help for investors or uh, of sponsors or something like that? And um, it's, it's not just focusing on real estate and infrastructure um, to take a little bit, to go deeper into the market and see, okay, what is going on in mobility? Yeah, like it's everything is okay. Elec electricity is the new thing. It's, uh, it's super hot, but um, maybe we should go more into the hydro space yeah, or some even a little bit more deeper into that. Um, and that's where we, where, where we see our, our USP that we try to, um, to be deep into the market, yeah, but also not as a, someone who gives you a product to sell or to invest, uh, just to be a part of the market. Yeah? And therefore, we, we, we see a lot of deals and, and scout a lot of, uh, uh, of funds, private equity, venture capital funds. And um, that's, we try to be active. Yeah? But we need to be in a niche at the end of the day because, I mean, it's a small bank. It's, it's not Goldman Sachs or something like that. So we have to, to focus on a couple of things and grow a little bit bigger in a niche. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And um, I mean, obviously, you said that that a lot of your customers are high net worth individuals who who see you as an advisor, who see you as somebody to to help them approach different markets. And obviously, one of those markets is is venture capital, is private equity, which falls under the alternative assets. Uh, why why do you believe that having a, a spread out portfolio? over different assets, asset classes is important and why specifically alternative, asset, alternative assets such as venture capital are important? Venture capital became more and more the engine of what we know as an economy yeah? in developed markets, but also in non-developed markets. Yeah? It's, it's not longer the heavy industry or stuff like that. It's more and more venture capital. And everything uh, happens much more faster than even 15 years ago. Yeah, that's what we saw during the pandemic, that uh, the development phases are going much, much, much more faster. It's not only move fast and destroy. It's just what can we make really better? Yeah, and in which field we can offer services which makes lives better for people. Obviously, we need to make money. Um, but on the other hand, it be became the engine. And if you look back just 20 years, you were able to invest in a Google or an Amazon in a very early phase of their life during uh, via the stock exchange. Yeah, you can be part of an IPO uh, and or maybe the day after. <laughs> um, but at least you, you, you're part of it. That's not longer possible. Um, if, after the VC funds and became bigger and bigger and bigger, it's much more natural that the companies stay in the venture capital system and the exit will be maybe on a level when the fund thinks, okay, for us, it's time to say goodbye. Um, and there will be some, uh, some good gains on the stock exchange when you do an IPO over the next 10 to 15 years, but it will be not that super opportunities that were in the, the late 90s, beginning of the, of the 2000s. It's completely different. So, I mean, there are IPOs, a lot of IPOs, um, but these are different kind of companies now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, and that's why we advise clients to look into venture capital, to be part of that, because um, on a risk return basis, it's, it's a must to be in that field at the end of the day. You cannot mm -hmm. wait that long. Yes. I mean, <clears throat> that, is, that is sort of the perspective that we take as well, where we as a very early stage investor believe that in, it's in the early phases of a company where you can really um, mm -hmm. create value for yourself as an investor as well, where you also help the companies to grow a lot faster, obviously, by, by providing them with capital in, a, in an early phase. And, and this is exactly the, the value proposition where we come in, where we say we scout in the very early stages of, of companies mm -hmm. because that is where the leverage of your investment is actually actually still the highest. So I, I completely agree with you on that. That's a very interesting insight to sort of hear that from your perspective as well. Um, would you 
or, or how much would you say? Because we obviously always, when we speak with with our investors, with our partners, uh, we often get the question: How much of my portfolio should I actually allocate to venture capital? I mean, what would what would your perspective be? I mean, I think there is no real measurement. It's it belong a little bit to how rich you are. I mean, what if you're something like a like a institutional investor, then obviously your venture capital or your alternative quote will grow and grow and grow and grow because you don't have that uh, that interest rates or uh, returns uh, on liquid assets anymore. Um, but I would recommend that at least 5% you should, or even a higher rate, you should put into venture capital or venture capital-like investments. Mm-hmm. And it pays off for a lot of reasons. Not only, I mean, we think that why people invest and how they will invest, that will change dramatically over the next five to 10 years. And because people want to be more in, in the business, they want to know more about it. They're, they're very curious and they really want to understand it. And uh, that's you can easily do that with venture capital yeah, because it's, it's, it's so interesting. It's, it's a little bit dramatic on, uh, on some end, uh, but it's so interesting to, to get in, uh, into touch with these kind of people. Yeah? If you have the opportunity to talk to an entrepreneur or something like that, that's completely different. Yeah? And that what makes a big difference. Uh, it's, and it's, it's so fascinating that you see when, when people coming out of, an, of, a, of a startup or a, a venture company, they will never sell at the, at the end of the day, yeah, right? It's, it's not that, like they say, okay, now I have 20, 30, 50 million. Yeah, they don't even think about that. And that's super interesting. And that's why, why I think it's not, I mean, at the end of the day, you advise people that they will make money. Yeah? But um, on the other hand, it's, I mean, at least it's entertaining. And that's what, what we always say to our clients who wants to invest in a, in a sports business or so, yeah? If it goes wrong, you make a Netflix doku out of it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, not seriously, but um, there's a lot of uh, things why you should invest in venture capital, and it's one reason is you have very often you have a very very good risk return profile. Um, and on the other hand, you learn a lot, and that's very very important. Definitely, I, I completely agree. I mean, that is that is obviously also one of the one of the factors that many of our partners really appreciate. Actually, being involved in the investment process, being involved in quarterly reports, getting all of that information about the company, how are they evolving? How can I help them? What doors can I open? So I, yeah. I completely agree with you on that as well. That um, there's much more than than money to to be made, but also experience to be gained. Definitely. I, that, that's very, very interesting. Um, so here's, here's one that you, that you also started to mention already before, but I would like to see sort of, of from your experience, did you see a change in, in behavior among your customers towards alternative assets during the pandemic? A lot. I mean, you cannot overestimate that. It's, I mean, in the beginning, obviously, everyone was scared of yeah, and brought back to, I don't know, to, the, to, to, to their own house. To, um, yeah, you were sitting there and thinking about what will happen, what not. Um, but uh, shortly after, I was starting with the real estate market. That people see, okay, prices will not come back. Uh, they're getting very curious because they had a lot of time at the end of the day, yeah? Uh, so you, you had the opportunity to talk to them about a lot of topics. You never ever, in the last 20 years, we never had the opportunity to talk that broad with customers, yeah? Um, and like when when people realize that you can do the business via Zoom or Teams, whatever, um, then the next thought was, okay, um, how does that work? And maybe can I invest? Yeah. And where can I do that? On a stock exchange or should I go going into a venture capital fund or even in a direct investment? Yeah? And um, you, you saw the same thing um, in, the, in the healthcare market. Yeah? That, I mean, it 
went so quick that there was a vaccine and uh, something like, I mean, I'm a big fan of Star Wars, so A New Hope Horizons or something like that, um, that it came really out of nothing. Yeah? And it started that people realize, don't bet against tech. Yeah? Stay positive. It's, it's, it's not stupid, the stupid quote that, yeah, something will come up. I mean, that's, yeah, but it's, it's proven yeah, that you can go, can, you can go out of these kind of crises even stronger. And um, it helps you a lot in your investment decision that you had a, the last 12 months is like, what else should happen? I mean, really, this was a very hard test for a lot of businesses and they're still there. And there's still, I mean, even the old economy stuff is uh, um, coming out stronger. Yeah? I mean, um, and that's, that, that's very positive news. Mm, and that's, what changed. that's really what changed that people realized, okay, I have to be in that now. Not thinking about it and maybe, yeah, maybe I start investing in healthcare, venture capital or tech and yeah, let's say 12 months. Yeah? No, and you need to be there now. Now it happens now, and it's uh, it everything moves very quick, and that's what always is very important about venture capital. I mean, it's the flavor of the day. It's like it represents uh, the here and now very, very good. It's quick, yeah, and it's it's intelligent, and it represents also the the future generations. I mean, if you look on like people, I mean, like my own kids, yeah, they get so well educated. And they're going out of school or out of universities and going into the market and know so much. Um, so, and that's why I think it's uh, venture capital. I mean, it's, it's people forget that it's a very old industry. I mean, it started in the fifties. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to name Silicon Valley, but a couple of firms still uh, are there and they're still there. And uh, therefore it's, uh, it's, it's here to stay. And the earlier you, you think about investing in early stage company, the better. Mm, definitely. I mean, we, we sort of embraced that, that whole situation as well with, with our fund and, and with the investments that we make by also looking at the companies who are actually now using the opportunity of, of a changed environment to start a new company. Uh, to to build a new business, taking into consideration all the the new that is around us, and yeah. um, and actually building companies for the future without having to take care of a lot of legacy. So yeah. there is there's really a, a very very exciting perspective there, and 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 sometimes and at least that's the the perception that I get from from venture capital. It's it's very much about today, but it's also a glimpse into the future yeah. because. A lot of the companies that, that we work with, they, they might be in, in a very, very early phase today. They're, they're, they're all creating revenues. Yes, they are. They all have a product that they're selling. But it's a little product that is actually taking, it, uh, taking for example, our, our workplace into the future, yeah? just to, to mention a few things. So there's, um, there's definitely a lot of exciting opportunities there. I, I completely agree. And yes, venture capital is, is here to stay for sure yeah. um which is why you're embracing it as as a bank again as well i think so maybe just to to slowly but surely get get our conversation wrapped up i th there's obviously always the the question so you have been working with a lot of venture capital firms before you've been working with private equity firms before mm -hmm. and um now we've been engaging in, in 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 certain activities together for the last well almost a year now mm -hmm. um so what is it that uh, really made you want to work with, with us? What, what uh, triggered you to say, Faraday, that's, that's something that we're definitely looking into and talking to about our, uh, our customers? Uh, between me and you, because it's Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Um, the thing is, it brings two worlds together. Yeah? Even if you, if you have high net worth clients, they... For some reason, um, for some, it's pretty hard to say, okay, listen, I commit a million euros or, or 500,000 or something like that into a field I've never been before. Um, so you have the, the club yeah, where people can 
do smaller investments, which is very important because um, then you can bring them into the field step by step. And um, due to the idea that it's a club, they can interact. Yeah? They can they can talk to they can talk with you or with your with your colleagues and. Uh, they can interact and make decisions and be part of decisions. And that's what is appealing to a lot of people. Um, and on the other hand, it's an institutional fund um, with a quite interesting approach because it's, for some reason, it's very local, right? And I do like the idea that we have partners from different region because then you have, you have a different flavor into it yeah it's a different kind of of thinking it's a different kind of uh, um how you take risk or uh, something like that so um that's for us it's very interesting and i mean basically a lot of people do underestimate the power of the uh, southern european uh, um countries yeah and um there are very 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 interesting opportunities and um so that's for us, it's 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 a very good partner, um, because you have the interaction and you have the, the the institutional side, and in between you you see a lot of opportunities. And it's, I mean, as I mentioned before, this is not the biggest bank in the world. Yeah? So um, I don't have. If I go to a big private equity company and said, "Listen, I have an idea." how we can approach the market. They say, okay, listen, <laughs> whatever. You don't have an MBA, you have nothing. Just go out of my way. Yeah. Um, but it's much more convenient to, to talk to people um, which have this, the same interests. Yeah? And it's, it's not about being a selling machine. It's about providing very interesting investment opportunities, but also be uh, in touch with people. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think that is, that is a very, very nice last sort of um, word towards all of this, because in the end, what we all do is, is build trust and build relationships among each other mm -hmm. to, to invest together into what are hopefully going to be the next and most exciting uh, <laughs> companies in, in the future of Europe. So thank you very much for, for the trust also that you're putting into, into us. And for those uh, for those nice words, Pleasure. Thomas, thank you very very much for taking the time today for having this conversation with us. Uh, I look forward to seeing you soon in person again. I hope either yeah, in Hamburg definitely. or Munich. We will see. Yeah. And um, thanks again, and have a great afternoon. Thanks for having me. All the best. Bye.